Well, welcome to the 700 Club. Outrage is following the issue of arrest warrants for Israel's prime minister and former defense minister. The International Criminal Court has accused them of war crimes in the battle against Hamas in Gaza. Congressional leaders are now calling on the Senate to sanction the court. Paul Strand brings us the story from Jerusalem. Prime Minister Netanyahu swiftly defended Israel's actions in Gaza. No war is more just than the war that Israel has been waging in Gaza after Hamas attacked us unprovoked. Israeli President Isaac Herzog wrote the decision has turned universal justice into a universal laughingstock. The ICC charges Netanyahu and Gallant are guilty of the war crime of starvation as a method of warfare and the crimes against humanity of murder, persecution, and other inhumane acts. We are accused of deliberately harming civilians while we are doing everything to prevent harm to civilians. We are accused of starving a population while we are bringing hundreds of thousands of tons of food to feed the population. The ICC's charges came amid evidence of another international organization's bias against Israel. A new report from the group UN Watch said a former United Nations Relief and Works Agency Commissioner General held a secret meeting in 2017 with terrorist groups including Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. There, the UNRWA chief reportedly told them, we are one and no one can separate us. As for the ICC warrants, they mean Netanyahu or Gallant could be arrested if they go to certain countries accepting the court's authority. Nations such as Ireland and the Netherlands agreed right away to do it if given the chance. And to those countries, Netanyahu won't be able to travel, and that's a very, very big thing. Netanyahu's hoping for a tough backlash against the court. This decision will have severe consequences for the ICC and those who cooperate with its decision. President-elect Trump's soon-to-be national security advisor, Congressman Mike Waltz, promises you can expect a strong response to the anti-Semitic bias of the ICC and UN come January. House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Michael McCall and Republican Senator Lindsey Graham want Senate Leader Chuck Schumer to bring up a bill for a vote that the House has already passed. The measure, called the Illegitimate Court Counteraction Act, Senate Bill 224, would impose sanctions on ICC employees or associates who aid this effort to prosecute Israeli leaders. Graham tweeted, the court is a dangerous joke. It's now time for the Senate to act and sanction this irresponsible body. Paul Strand, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, CBN News Middle, Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell is with us now live from Jerusalem. So the court is claiming Israel is using starvation to punish the people in Gaza. What, what is Israel, is, how are they responding? Well, Israel says they've just supplied, since the war began, Gordon, 1.1 million tons of food by air, land, and sea, including more than 56,000 trucks. It sends about 200 trucks filled with humanitarian aid each day into Gaza. That includes food, medical supplies, water, enough for 3,200 calories for every man, woman, and child in Gaza. In addition, Gordon, they have facilitated the vaccination of 97% of Gazans against polio. And, you know, in a recent Channel 12 report here in Israel, they concluded Hamas steals most of the food, sells it to their population, and by that, they've made about a half a billion dollars so they can recruit more fighters. So, uh, according to that report, Israel's aid is actually the main oxygen pipeline for Hamas. So it's aiding the very terror group it's fighting. So the, on the one hand, it fights the enemy. On the other hand, it gives its oxygen it needs to fight. So that's the, uh, the case for Israel uh, against starvation. 1.1 million tons of food since October. Well, I, I've got to point out that Stanford University did a survey of Gaza, and they did it before October 7th. So it's more than a year ago. Uh, and in that survey, they discovered that the population of Gaza suffered from, you know, the, this new term, food insecurity, which, you know, for, for us that speak English, it's hunger. And, and that was all before the war. And so under Hamas, Hamas was stealing their food then. All the humanitarian aid that was going was being stolen and being diverted into weapons and rockets and how can we attack Israel. So... I don't get the IC. I, what, what evidence do they have that somehow Israel is using starvation uh, as a, a weapon of war? This, this really doesn't make any sense. Are, are, are they just ignoring the facts on the ground? 
Well, they seem to be. And also the U.N. at one time during the in the last few months accused Israel of creating a famine uh, inside Gaza. But when you look at the facts on the ground and what uh, actually uh, Israel has been doing, facilitating uh, all of this, uh, this humanitarian aid and food, not only by uh, by land and they've opened other uh, land corridors have also allowed the U.S. to bring in things by sea. They've opened the port of Ashdod and uh, and to be able to facilitate more aid. Uh, they've also had the UAE and Jordan providing aid as well. Uh, so boots on the, the facts on the ground, Gordon, uh, don't seem to uh, buttress this fact of trying to starve the population uh, of Gaza. All right. Well, what are the practical political consequences of the charges? Well, the practical uh, consequences would be that if uh, Benjamin Netanyahu or Yoav Gallant, if they go to any one of the 123 countries that are a signatory to the ICC, uh, they could be arrested. Uh, as Paul said in his report, in Ireland and in the Netherlands have all said they would uh, go ahead and, uh, and arrest Netanyahu uh, and or Gallant. But uh, also Hungary has invited Netanyahu to their uh, their country, and he says uh, the the president of Hungary says uh, he will invite him, but he won't arrest him. And so I think it depends on what other country how they uh, see this ruling. Uh, so I think it has broader implications as well, uh, Gordon. Uh, and I think it fuels anti-Semitism. It brands Israelis as war criminals. Uh, it gains credibility uh, with its members. Uh, so the enemies of Israel and the Jews, I think, will use this as sort of a legal bludgeon to demonize and stigmatize the Jewish state, uh, accusing them of war criminals, crimes against humanity, and starving the people of Gaza, even if the charges are unfounded, or if the ICC really doesn't have jurisdiction on this. Well, what's the reaction in Israel to the Senate bill? It's Senate Bill 224, the Illegitimate Court, court uh, Counteraction Act, which is designed to follow ICC, uh, where the, the U.S. will now sanction members of the international court. Uh, how, how will that work? Well, I think they're they're looking forward to that and looking forward to perhaps what the uh, uh, the Trump administra administration will be doing. I think that that uh, that legislation will be a priority for the Trump administration. We heard what Mike uh, what Mike Waltz said as uh, incoming uh, national security advisor that it's going to be a strong reaction to this. Uh, uh, likely, they will advance sanctions, maybe against ICC officials, including Kareem Khan and the judges who issued the warrants. Uh, and I think they're going to make that uh, legislation a priority. Uh, Gordon, it also could lead to confrontations with European allies that are signatories of the ICC, like the UK and France. But I think you're going to have a strong reaction uh, when, uh, when the Trump administration comes in. As someone uh, wrote, uh, they should brace, uh, the ICC should brace for impact. All right. Well, let's all turn our focus to UNRWA, the UN Relief Works Agency. Uh, and this is just a bombshell report coming out of UN Watch, uh, where there were there are links and and there's a picture showing it links between UNRWA and terrorist group. Uh, what what's the impact of that? Now we'll point out to the audience there's a real sea change getting ready to happen. Under the Trump administration, he cut off funding to UNRWA uh, because he was convinced that they were aiding terrorism. In the first week of the Biden administration, he, he reinstituted uh, U.S. funding for UNRWA. So uh, what, what's the take now? Do you think UNRWA is, is finally on its last legs? Is this, is this horror going to go away? Well, you would think so with all the evidence that's come over the last several months of the connection with UNRWA and Hamas and, and the implication of many uh, uh, Hamas and UNRWA employees being part of October 7th. Uh, when you talk about the UN Watch report, it's just added evidence of this incestuous, incestuous relationship. Uh, during that meeting, the UNRWA head also emphasized a spirit of partnership with these groups. Uh, and their role as UNRWA would be a historical witness to the injustice that's befallen the Palestinian people, not so much humanitarian aid. And he actually invited them to challenge an UNRWA decision, wanted, and yet he wanted the meeting not to be publicized that could lead to a loss of funding. And so the UN Watch report really is one more evidence uh, of this relationship. And uh, recently we talked, uh, Gordon, to the head of the Ministry of Immigration here in Israel. He told us that if you weren't directly or indirectly connected to Hamas, you really couldn't work for UNRWA. All one more reason why the Knet 
Knesset last, last month voted to divorce itself from UNRWA uh, here in Israel. I don't know if we have that picture uh, in, in some kind of still. It, it's absolutely stunning that here you have the head of UNRWA uh, meeting with terror, known terrorist groups uh, and then uh, the expression to them, we are one, and then saying, please keep this meeting quiet because if our donor countries find out, uh, our funding may be at risk. There's the picture, and you can see Palestinian Islamic Jihad, Hamas chief of foreign relations. Um, you know, it's, it's absolutely incredible that you could have that kind of meeting, make that kind of statement, and then in the aftermath of October 7th, claim that you didn't know it. Uh, you didn't know Hamas employees were on your payroll. You didn't know Hamas tunnels were underneath your, your various posts in, in Gaza. You didn't realize rockets were being launched from classrooms. It, it just, the, the, the web of lies coming out of the UN is absolutely stunning. Well, Chris, thank you for the report and, and thanks for uh, staying strong for Israel. You are our watchman on the wall. We appreciate it. Thanks, Gordon.